Good morning, friends. Rise up in hope today. Rise up in hope today. I hope you're ready. I hope you didn't just wake up, but if you did just wake up, I want you to get your ears in formation to be blessed, to be full of the truth, to be full of hope, and to have a victorious day. Today's theme in our Rise Up and Hope is there is one bigger. There is one bigger. Say it with me. There is one bigger. There is one bigger. And if the one that is bigger is for you, then no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. I'm going to say that again. There is one bigger. And if the one that is bigger is for you, then no weapon formed against you will ever prosper, will ever prosper. We are about to unpack Joseph and his life. And if there were ever weapons formed against one human being, you can find it in the book of Joseph. But the one absolute was that before the foundations of the earth, the Lord was designing and creating and on his whiteboard, he put favor. He put whenever something comes at him, I got his back. He designed protection all the days of his life. And we know that when God is for us, all hell can break loose, but it won't prosper. It doesn't mean it doesn't try to prosper. It just means that if you hold on, if you stand and having done all stand, that the God that created you, the God that designed you for greatness has got your back and he'll make a way. And today is the day he's going to make a way for us. Today is the day he is going to show up on our behalf. I believe it. I've been up. I've had my boxing gloves on for a few hours now. And when that happens, I am certain that the enemy trembles. And then when I get my warring partners in formation with the purposes of God, I mean, already the enemy has been annihilated. And I want you to receive that for yourself today. There is one bigger, and if the one that is bigger is for you, then no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Joseph had many weapons formed against him, and every time, every time, he was delivered. The timing of it was God's, it's always God's timing. We all have to be willing to surrender the clock to God. But in our surrender of the clock, we can do many things. And one of the things that we can do is we can stand in the face of the enemy and say, my God is for me. No weapon you form against me is going to prosper. I wrote down some things here today, and I'm going to share with you my thoughts. When I can't, God can. When they don't, God does. When they won't, God will. You are the God that shows up in the first hour. You are the God that shows up in the last hour. You are the God that shows up in the whatever hour I need. You are the God that overrides. You are the God that overtakes. You are the God that overpowers the enemy's tactics. If I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast about you, my God. On you, Jesus. On you, powerful, powerful Holy Spirit. You are the God who parts the seas, who divides the line who pulls down every stronghold that sets itself up against you today. You are the God who infuses blessing, infuses blessing. Think about a, uh, a infusion into your arteries of God's blessing because he is a good father and he has lots for us body of Christ. We have to position ourselves to stand and declare who he is in our lives and to take those things that are coming against us and push them back, push them back. You know, I find that the enemy right now is pushing. He's pushing his walls in our face and we have two choices. We can let him smash us or we can push him back. And God says, body of Christ, raise yourself up, rise up today and push him back. I have given you the keys 
Use your keys today, body of Christ. Use your keys today that I've given you, Tracy. You are the God who annihilates the enemy's plan. All we have to do is declare the blessing and the plan of God for our day today. You are the God who resurrects. There is no situation where you say live that dies. I'm going to read that again. You are the God who resurrects. There is no situation where you say live that dies. So if God is saying your marriage will live, then you stand on it. You declare it. You speak it out. And you wait for your deliverer because he's on the throne. But he is waiting for your partnership in faith. And if you have little faith and you're weary, ask him for more. The Bible says, ask me, asking you shall receive. Seek me and you'll find me. Knock in my door, knock on my door and I will open the door. So there is no situation where God says live that it's going to die. Psalm 34 two, my soul will boast in the Lord. My soul will brag upon my God. Before we go into Genesis where Joseph lives, I want to read Deuteronomy 28. Oftentimes, I will take out my Bible and I will read this out loud over my house. And I will declare what God says for me because... I try to walk in obedience. I don't always make it. I'm not perfect. There's nobody who is perfect. And I'll be the first one to say I'm not. But as a, as a vessel of the living God that is trying to be obedient, these are my blessings in Deuteronomy 28. And I want to read them for us today. And I encourage you to pull out your Bible, get your weapon wherever you need it. Wherever you need to go today, you pull this out and you start reading it out loud. And I'm telling you, there will be some things that get shaked, that get shook. There will be some demons that flee because the demons can't stand the power and the authority of God. Blessings for obedience, 28.1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all of his commands that I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. All the blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Number three, you will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. The crops of your land and your young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in you will be blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. This is hope today, friends. This is good news. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. And even right now, right now, as I'm delivering this word, the enemies that have my back and my name on their agenda right now are scattering in seven directions, seven directions. They may be coming at me in one direction. They're going out in seven, says the Lord. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns. And on everything you put your hand to, the Lord will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you an oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, in the young of your livestock, in the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your forefathers to give you. Verse 12, the Lord will open the heavens and the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and, I, and carefully follow them, you will always be on the top and never on the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of these commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. I want to stop there for a minute because, you know, some of us, 
we think the commands are, you know, too hard. Really? Look at what they produce. Anything that is worth something is sacrificial and cost something. And the commands, and we don't have to do it in our own strength. This is what we fully have to understand, friends. God's not asking you to do this without his power. He's asking you to let Holy Spirit inside of you to give you the power to follow his commands to the best that you can. And then his grace comes on top of you in those places where you're being developed, where you're growing. It's not that hard. Listen to the truth. The truth of the matter is that God sent his son Jesus to die for us. But when he sent him and he knew he was going to overcome and rise, he said, I won't leave you without the helper, the helper of the Holy Spirit, the helper of the power that overcomes, the helper of the power that delivers you from the temptations and the addictions and the things that you want to get yourself clean from. Call out to the Holy Spirit every day. Holy Spirit, today I need you. Today I'm walking where they're going to be doing the things that I don't want to do. How do I do this? Holy Spirit, I need you and I guarantee you, I've been tested and tried. I guarantee you Holy Spirit will show up and you will witness the mighty hand of your living God. We just don't activate. We don't use what we've been given. We don't declare. We don't say, today I'm blessed. Today, going in, coming out, my storehouses, the bills I need paid will be paid because God is for me. We don't, we don't use our tongue to the level that we need to in this day. There's a different day going on, friends. You cannot be wimpy and make it. You have got to rise up and not shrink back. And you've got to call on the ones that sharpen your iron. I have a team. I live with three other people that when I'm weak, they're strong. I draw upon them. They draw upon me. And then I go outside. And then we have our church. And then we have our family. And that's what we need to be doing. We are living in a day where we have got to rise up and not shrink back. Joseph had many weapons formed against him. And the only thing, the one absolute that I keep coming away with was God was bigger. God was bigger. God was bigger. God was bigger. And God is bigger. He is bigger than your situation today. He is bigger than the enemies that come at you in one direction. Let them flee in seven. And as a matter of fact, tell them. There are seven directions waiting for them that they can't come near you today. Plead the blood of Jesus, the powerful blood of Jesus over your circumstance, the powerful blood of Jesus over you, over your finances, over your business, whatever God has given you to steward. Steward it well by the power of his blood and watch what happens. There is one bigger. And if the one that is bigger is for you, then no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Have a blessed, powerful day, victorious, because you picked up your keys, you activated your tongue with authority, and you watched the enemy flee.